Okay. Shavuot Tov. Good morning, everybody. We have the privilege today to, to, to learn, so to start the week off strong, strong, strong. We need to start it off strong. And it's a very special morning, and I'll share in a second why. Uh, first of all, the whole month of Tevet, we're continuing to learn, is sponsored by Alon and Jenny Englinoff. The week, this whole week is sponsored by Michael and Phyllis Miller, uh, commemorating the fifth year of Phyllis's brother, Dr. Mark Weiner, Mordechai Nachman ben Chaim Meir, Zichon Libracha, by Michael and Cindy Le- uh, Levy, and Josh and Miran Adler, in honor of their birth of their granddaughter to Nathan Ellen Noah, Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov. By Daniela and Yoni Berg, in honor of their precious daughter's first birthday, Ora Hallel. I can't believe it's a year. May she continue to grow in a home and country full of love, safety, warmth, and achdut. But today's shir, specifically today's shir, is uh, in memory of someone whose second yard site was this last Shabbos. And it was someone who I am, um, is so alive in my life, in my family's life. And that is the Yotzeit of Nachman Futterman. Some of you remember Nachman Futterman. And those of you that didn't have the privilege of meeting him, I, wanna, I, I just want to share with a little bit about him because he, he continues to have such a profound impact on, on everything that we do here, really. Everything that we do here in the shul and the kila and everything in my life. His name was Nachman Yachmil bin Yehuda Leib and Golda Zichon Livracha. Nachman... I, at, at his at his Leviah, I had I had the, the tremendous loss of giving him an hesped, and I said there was so much to be said, and I knew that everyone would have loved to say say something there, and I felt like I was saying something in the name of everyone when I said that everyone just wanted to be around him. He was a person that everyone just wanted to be around, and I knew him since I was a teenager. And I had the incredible privilege of learning so, so much from him. And he honored life. He mamish honored the privilege of being alive. Nachman was w- much older than me, and yet sometimes I felt like I was his older brother. And, but really, he was a Rebbe to me. He continues to be a Rebbe to me. Um, I was sharing with someone last night that what Nachman was all about is that somehow he was an oasis of calm for so many lost souls in the world. Even people that didn't think they were lost, when they, they, they clung to him, they mamish clung to him. He was a big, a heart of gold that always just wanted to, to remind you that it's a privilege to be alive. And it's a mamish, a privilege to be part of B'nai Yisrael. And it's a privilege to learn any word of Torah we ever get to learn. So I miss him very, very much. And we're sending love here to Miriam, to his wife, and to his children and grandchildren. And we're going to keep on, keep on rocking it until Mashiach comes and even after. Bezrat Hashem. This is of Nachman. Nachman Yerachmiel ben Yehuda Leib and Golda. Zichonu Livracha. Okay, so you, if you have the pages in front of you, where we're, we're finishing today a chapter... The, the page we're on is Daf Kufhe in the book, and if you have the photocopies Daf Kufhe, it's towards the middle of the booklet that you have right now. Okay, we gotta be, we gotta we gotta really stay focused, Hebron. We gotta we gotta stay chazak, 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 because you come out of these Shabbos, it's it's torture, it's mamish torture. And I want to say Shabbos has, has never been, on the one hand, so dark, and on the other hand, so de- you know, pushing us to be determined. To stay focused and stay strong. Chazak, chazak, chazak. So, we've established that us, Am Yisrael, coming back to Eretz Yisrael, physically, is the first level. Koma. It's the koma of the neshama. It's the stage of the soul. Uh, uh, sorry, of the body. Koma taguf. Coming back to the land after so many years was just, just one stage. We came back to the land, to Eretz Yisrael, to begin to understand how to let the whole world know that God is one. That's basically what we've been learning for weeks now. And I want to repeat that sentence again, because it doesn't exempt us from anything. Thank you. It actually puts so much more of this holy responsibility on us. We came back 
after thousands of years of being homeless, to explain to us, first of all, to internalize deep, deep down inside, what does it mean to actually live in a home, live, live at home, be at home? But the beginning stage that we've been learning is just the koma of the goof, it's the body that came home. And then the whole thing, and, and then only then it starts. And we've been learning this for a while. This is hinted to in the word, a word that many people, um, you know, attribute to like the, the, the main description of what it means to come back home. That's what we were speaking about. Komemiyut, which usually people like to you know, think it means just upright. Komemiyut means it's the language of shte komot. There's first is the komata guf, the, the physical coming back home, and then there's the koma of the neshama. Everything is gacha pratis. It's in, it's incredible how this is right now what we're learning in the time that we're learning, because there's there's such a bilbul, there's been such a bilbul, there's been such a confusion within the identity of the people that are that have come back home that are living here. We find a lot of confusion, and we find a need to really, really, really um, humble ourselves before the privilege and the Bakasha, and the real request that our souls are requesting is, what does it mean to build a home for your soul even before the Beit HaMikdash is rebuilt? What does that, what does that mean? Or are we just saying we're going to wait until the Beit HaMikdash is rebuilt to feel at home? No, we can't. We can't do that. <laughs> the soul revolution has to happen here. A soulful revolution, a ma'apechan nishmatit. And that means that's demanding of us to become beings, spiritual beings, like never before. And it's not even enough to know what all the tzaddikim once said, because we know what many of the tzaddikim once said. We have all the access to all this farm. We can quote all the shiurim of all the different malachim of all the tzaddikim and tzaddikot from all over the generations. And yet this door... Now we understand we have to be walking, living, breathing examples of what it means to be a spiritual entity when you're living back in your physical home. And that demands a lot. You know, one of the things, I'm just going to go back to Nachman for a second. He gave me a bracha on my 30th birthday. And he said he, want, he wanted to give me a bracha that eventually, like Rabbi Nachman says, Mashiach is going to come and teach the whole world. And he said, I'm going to give you the bracha of patience. The bracha of patience. The bracha, the bracha of having patience doesn't exempt you from saying, well, I'll just be patient and one day things will unfold. The bracha of patience means while I'm being patient in regards to how I think things need to unfold, I'm discovering a treasure. I'm doing a lot of work. It's not, patience doesn't mean being passive. Actually, we can be the most active while we're in a state of patience, of learning through patience. Well, we've had here now 75 years of an interesting combination of I, things need to happen now versus, wait a second, they're not happening the way we, the script that we thought was going to happen. Where are we right now? And this is exactly where, as you see, the, the, the topic of what today is, we have to move forward to the next koma of komemiyut, and that is the koma of soul. That is the koma of living here as people that are mamash spiritual beings, soulful, connected consciously to our soul in all of what we call revadeya chayim, all the layers of life, all of them. And we're going to discuss today how. How do you do that? What does that mean? Does it mean you daven more? Does it mean you learn more Torah? So you obviously know that that's not where we're, that's not the, if I say it like that, that's not, a, it's obviously not exactly what we're going to be speaking about. But in, in it, it basically like, there's a humbling that has to happen before learning a piece like today, where we're saying, okay, let me rid myself of everything that I thought I knew was the way that I, it was the right thing, was the right way. You know, what was the right thing to do? Because we want to untangle ourselves from this very, very confusing you know, it's not, the, the time is not confusing. We've got to wipe out evil. All those things aren't confusing. The question is, once the evil is wiped out, then, then what? Like we said two weeks ago, uh, three weeks ago, last time we learned this. Once the evil is out, then what? Then what? We're going to, Bezrat Hashem, through the gvura of our holy soldiers, Bezrat Hashem, and then all the wisdom and koch that Hashem gives them, 
experience a time in Eretz Yisrael where a certain degree of evil is wiped out from the land. The question is, what do you do with it afterwards? What am I, what am I who's showing up afterwards? Everyone's talking about the Yom Sha'acharei, and they're always thinking about, you know, they're talking about the day after, but they're always speaking in the context of, you know, okay, so, you know, who's going to live and uh, where, and what are the borders going to look like? As well, borders, what about who's already within the borders? <laughs> Who's, what's happening within the Gvulot? What's happening within the borders of the Am? Nechon? Okay, so go to the bottom paragraph on Dav Kufhei. Zai Yesod HaGadol Sheomed Bipsis Chayeinu Be'eretz Yisrael Shei Efshar Lavo Lishlimut Chayein Nefesh Veruach Bli Ha'arat HaNeshama Without my soul beginning to illuminate, I can't live a full life. I can't really be alive. It may work for other nations and other countries. Other nations and other countries may actually live to the best of their ability without necessarily activating the soul button. By us, it, it just won't work. It doesn't work here. You know, I, I want to emphasize this point. Like We could keep on trying and trying to do things that take into consideration all the different expectations and demands of the world, and it will lead us to nowhere. Just like it's led us to nowhere until this day. When the soul is illuminating, when the neshama is shining, somehow those things that I thought I have to give so much chashivut to, I have to make so important, they're not, they're not as important, they stop being that important. Things that <coughs> threaten me, things that, things that bring, make me scared, things that put fear into me. When the neshama is shining, it, somehow those things that usually you know, put, make me live in a state of terror, they don't. They just don't. Because living a soul life is the real brave state of being. And by us, by Am Yisrael, here in this land, with this people that we're part of, it won't work any other way. It's not going to work. Dancing around being politically correct won't work. It hasn't worked. Look at the situation we're in. It hasn't worked. It never, it's not meant to work. It's not the purpose. It wasn't the dream of that, that, that God had. Saying, you know, you're going to come back and then you're going to be a real smart diplomat. You're going to show you're smart through your you know, diplomacy. And then you're going to be able to be a people that's ready for the reason why you came back home. Zelo vet kacha. It doesn't work like that. Kach <coughs> dugma, second, second line. Even though the nation has begun to undergo some type of wellness of its strength, specifically we're talking about a nation that came out of Auschwitz and built a country. So that's all true. Yeah, we got a little bit stronger. And we're, you remember this period that we're in, Rav Sasson likened it to the period of, does anyone remember? What period of the Jewish calendar are we in? Svirata Omer. So yeah, we're getting, we're cleaner, we're getting better, whatever that means. We're, we're getting more well, Havra'a. And, w- and part of that period of becoming healed people is the next thing that he's going to say. Ulehasir me'atzma et ha-pachad u-morach alev she-bau b'me'erat ha-galut. And a, a quite large extent of what it means to get healed is that I don't live in terror and in fear. This is a bad time to learn this Torah. But you hear what I'm saying? I don't live in that state of the galut yid that I never knew, never knew when the next second's going to be that someone's going to come and whack him in the face, steal all his money, burn his house down. In fact, there's, a, there's another piece of footage that I saw that was really uh, uh, eye-opening. I saw this last night. Someone was interviewing someone from down south, from one of the kibbutzim. I believe that some one of his family members was taken into captivity. And they were sitting down somewhere, and there was a tzeva adom. That was down south. And the interviewee refused to move. And he, and he, and he wasn't like, freaking out. He was like, Ani lo zaz. Ani lo chai bepachad. Ani, I'm not going to live in fear right now. And everyone around him is trying to find shelter. And he's standing, standing there and he's saying, We have just been relying on an iron dome and bomb shelters. And we think that the pulse of the nation is healthy like this. And he says, I'm not moving. I came here, I gave my life, I'm in the army, I pay taxes, trying to be the best citizen that I can. 
the country that I'm invest, fully invested in has to protect. It's, it's not about me running to, to, catch, to catch shelter. Now, obviously, it, it, you know, the, I, either the Iron Dome intercepted or it didn't go to where he was. But you just saw a Jew that it refuses to accept the state of Galut in Eretz Yisrael. It was such an eye-opener. Because we're just accustomed to what we spoke about before, which is betonadot. That means those barriers, those big um, blocks that they place before bus stops so that there's no car ramming. We got accustomed to an iron dome, and we got accustomed to having mamadim. And we accepted that the safe rooms and the iron dome, that's just the way we live. That has nothing to do with the tsura of a Jew living in Eretz Yisrael. You realize it? Nothing. That's galut. And I watched this like minute of the guy just sitting through the siren and, and speaking calmly, saying, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm not going, I'm not running anywhere, I'm not living like this. This is not my life. This is not a, I'm not telling anyone what to do right now. I'm just explaining how much koach I got from a person that refused to accept the reality of galut within Eretz Yisrael. It was very, very thought-provoking. And it, it touched me deeply. He didn't in that nano, that first nanosecond? No, first of all, you have to realize it's happening there for 20 years, and it probably happened three times during that day. Oh. You know? So he didn't budge. Okay. He didn't budge. Nothing. Oh. Didn't budge. When we went down to Beiri last week, <laughs> the, the, once you get to the Kibbutz Beiri, which is a few kilometers from, from Aza, you hear, I, I didn't know what it was in the beginning, but it, it was the tanks, bomb, right? Bombing. But, and then, like, the first few times, I'll admit, I was like, it's still, you know, I was like, Mashu Shik Shek Bi, I guess, they're shaking a little bit. But after a while, it's just like, it's not even like, it, it wasn't that I realized every single second, oh, no, 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 this doesn't mean it's an attack on me. It's almost just a reality that you're living for. And we lived it for a few hours, and by the time we left, I mean, it, it was happening every few minutes. One of these loud, loud booms, like, really loud booms. And it was almost like by the time we left, it was like, yeah, that's just life here. That's just life right now. So for us, you know, it should never happen again here. But here in Efrat, how many times have we had to run into the bomb shelter the last two and a half months? Four, five, I don't know. I remember every time I, we ran in, I told my kids, like, children, this right now is how our brothers and sisters down south have been living their whole lot, kids your age, this is the only reality they know. That's accepting Galut in Eretz Yisrael. But he's saying over here, to a certain extent, we've become more well and we don't live like that. Alavai, that should be the real reality here. He says, until that happens, lo the only way you can really remove the fear of living in that state of being Ela bidvikut bahashem, with this word called word called dvikut. Bifchinat he'arat haneshama. What does it mean to have dvikus? It's a word that we like to speak about a lot. It's also a great name of a Jewish music group that, that <laughs> also caused. I would say they brought a lot of. I grew up on it. They brought a lot of dvikus to the neshama. Dvikus definitely brought dvikus to the soul with their with their nigunim. But what does that really mean? To have dveik? Dveikus means that it's my soul that's basically the one that's more or less running the show and not my body, not my, not my, not my mental element of living in a state of fear. When my soul, like, like Rav Kook says, Kshana shama meira gam shamayim ote arafel mefikim or naim. When the soul is illuminating, even cloudy skies like today, what they're basically bringing down is they're producing sweet, beautiful, and holy light. When the soul is illuminating. As a people here in the land, we've had the arms, we've had the guns, we've had the, a lot of different things illuminating, but as a collective people, Haim HaNeshama Meira Am is the soul of the nation shining and illuminating. It's not a, I'm, not, I'm not putting that as a debate, I'm just putting it out there as something to think about. Velachen Anu Roim Hayom, third line from the bottom. שאותם הבנים והנכדים של הגיבורים שעסקו בבניין הארץ בחירוף נפש, מהססים ומגמגמים 
נוכח לחצי, לחצי האומות, ואין להם כוח לעמוד מולם. This is an amazing few lines. This is... What's that? Unbelievably relevant. What he, I want to just explain what he just said in the last three lines over here. One of the... This we learned a while ago. One of the ways to get the soul to illuminate is through the concept called Mesirut Nefesh. When Mesirut Nefesh, when you give your life and you give your being in order for, the, for a bigger picture, for the, for the Am, for Hashem, that is, that is and, and not necessarily saying only through death, Chas V'Shalom, but when, you're, when your ideal state of being in this world is a, is a being of Mesirut Nefesh, that's one of the ways that the Neshama is Meir, that the soul illuminates. So he's saying that's the door that built Eretz Yisrael, whether they realized it or not, they were shining a gavad. They were, they, were, they were brighter than anything in the world. Right? That was them. Their grandchildren, he said, didn't follow... Th- He's not saying this yet. We're going to fill in this blank. They didn't follow through with after komat guf komat neshama. They didn't follow through with a soulful experience of living in the land. And we find grandchildren of people that built this country that are frightened and stuttering before the pressures of the world. International pressure. And they don't have the strength to stand before them. And this we see mamash in our lives. The grand the grandchildren. The next generations, yes. Or children and grandchildren, stuttering. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is really far out, huh? This is like, but, w- w- why is this? He says, because what happened? Geula is two levels. Gomata guf, the body. Like, yeah, the grandparents came here and they, they played their role of the redemption by filling in the, perfectly the first slot. The first slot is komata guf. That means the body returning. But without then following through with komata neshama, you start to stutter because you start to basically live in terror and fear again because you're confused because your neshama is not shining. It's not your soul that's illuminating. The soul shining removes terror and fear from our being, from our midst. Mesirut nefesh is one of the causes like that to make that happen. But we don't lechatchila look for mesirut nefesh, right? That's not. It's always a bediyevid. We don't look, wake up in the morning and say, how could I really risk my soul in order for my neshama to shine today? Right? That's not how we act. Back then, in 1947, 48, no one looked for it, but that was the only... What choice, you know, what, what, what was the alternative? Yeah, it, 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 yeah, it was wonderful. Uh, Shabbat, my fellow came back from Aza, and mm-hmm. um, he came back for Shabbat. He surprised me. And he tells uh, husband, and he was saying, I was talking about Hanukkah, about creating the light within the darkness, and how everybody's soul is lifted and happy. And saying that their soul was so illuminated there, yeah. that for me, the majority, I, you know, we're not talking, the collective feeling is to do what we need to be doing. And we're, we're going to create the light in this darkness. Yeah. And it was just like so... Yeah. He's not one to really... Because express his... No, he's not. He's <laughs> <so, laughs> <laughs> 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 I know him. But it was so... Um, powerful, so the grandchildren here... You, you have to put on sunglasses around these chayalim these days. It's... The, well, they're, they're so... I think they're very... They're bright. They're bright. 47, 48. It's much more clear. Much more clear. I'm asking my father, where were you? And then Gurion read the declaration. He says, where was I? I was a kid, he was like 16, 17 years yeah. old. He said, I was fighting. It was either I fought or I died. Right. Like, that was it. Right. You want to say something? Um, just just louder. Okay, okay. I, I, I'm, I'm finding it hard to obviously keep it illuminating because, like, there's the you know, obviously the news of these soldiers, another death of another child, and I just, it will make me really plummet. And right. I'm having a really hard time I think that at Bemet, everyone is, and to even come up and show up to a shir of learning Torah on a Sunday morning after news like last night is an element of mysterious nefesh. So there's no, there's no need. There's no, yeah, I there's, there's nothing like, don't, don't think that, don't feel guilty if you do find yourself grabbing onto moments of light. It's all in their schut. 
any light that we're grabbing onto today, today, is all in their merit. But thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I could give a I could give a testament to what the Rebbeton said, Dafka about her son is that it's it's Mamach I saw it with my own eyes when engaging with him over Shabbos that you'd never believe that a warrior that lives like that receives fuel from your simcha, from your, from, from your strength. It's like, what are you kidding me? That you're just trying to make me feel good. No, I saw it. Especially what you shared with me last night. I, saw, I, I You see it. They mamash receive kochot to continue to have mesirut nefesh when they see, when they're, when they're receiving from us. It's mamash a shutfut. A hundred percent. It's for real. Now, I just, it's important for me to stress that what he's speaking about here, about the Mebul Balim, that can't speak to the nations of the world, that's, we're not referring to the Chayalim at all. You understand that, right? We're, understand, we're, we're speaking about those that have found themselves in places of decision making in the name of the Am. Nahon? That, that's just to be very clear. Politics? Politicians? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a word we don't <laughs> try to say in Shul, but yeah. <laughs> Mamash. No, 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 no. That meaning, meaning the Chayalim HaKadoshim that are living in, in this... They're in Mesirat Nefesh. They're in Mesirat Nefesh, that's why. They're in Mesirat Nefesh. And our tefillahs and our, our strength, even a little bit of strength, that's our battlefield too. It's Mamash our battlefield. And even though it's a little bit Ilana's, I could very much identify with what you're saying. Um, we're speaking here about those that are supposed to be representing what the Ratzon of the Am is, what the will of the people is, right? Yeah. I heard that actually, honestly, everybody has the Pira, except for those specific people. Politicians, I learned somewhere, I don't know if it's true, that they actually have the Pira taken from them because they're the ones who are... I mean, it would make, it would, it would actually make a lot of sense because it doesn't make any other sense to think that they have Bechira and this is the Bechira. So where do we take, like, the control? In her, but I, I think that it's actually, it goes down. It's really not the politicians or those people who don't have Bechira. It's us making sure that we're making enough noise that this is, the right people there. This is the purpose of what we're learning. What is the Ratzon coming from within the Am up to Hashem? Like what kind of what kind of imagery are we showing to Hashem saying this is what we think would be the best for the Am right now? None of us are looking at anyone that's keep, any of these people standing on top and saying this is for sure what you had in mind after 2,000 years. Ensikui, there's no one saying I couldn't relate to any person that would look at anyone from that, from, from there. But that's what whether they have Bechir or not, excuse me, is not even part of this, of the Avodah, of what this Sefer is driving out of us, because this is not asking about... It's on us. It's on us. Nachon, nachon. It's not, like... I'm not even involving them. I'm not even involving them. I'm, I'm, I'm just asking Hashem for Rachmanis, but, but not even involving those people. I'm saying, he's explaining what happens... When you, up until you lose Bechira, let's go with what you're saying. And when your Bechira is to not shine your soul, but rather, how do I make sense? How do I make America or Europe or anyone else happy? Maybe that's what makes you lose your Bechira. Kind of like a Paro, Lahavdil type of energy of like, you know, you didn't have Bechira at a certain point. 
But as long as we have Bechira, which is hopefully we all feel like we have Bechira, what are we choosing to, to bring to the plate right now within the people that live in here in Eretz Yisrael? Yeah. But the most amazing thing is that when I'm feeling this way, it's only learning. Like, uh, this is your classes, you know, be give Torah, and that is my way up. I think that that's you're touching upon like for the for what what the soul of Amis Amisrael is coming to a place where they realize I'm not I'm not um, running away and hiding by learning Torah. It is the only thing that I re. It's the first stage though. It's not just the learning Torah. Meaning the implementation of what I'm learning is what it's all about. Gdola shimusha yoter milimuda. And I'm feeling this across the board. I was wondering with myself, I was checking with myself, saying, I find myself, like, escaping to, like, Torah stuff. And I was wondering, how holy is this? Am I, am I, and then I started to realize, is it escape? Or is it actually, like, just a hakara, a recognition that nothing else can justify our being here? Nothing else justifies the war. Nothing else justifies the Messiah with Nefesh. Nothing else. So this, I see this happening at Mamash amongst the the the, the klal. So, but thank you again for sharing that. Okay, so next we're in the next page on top. Apal pi sheli chora mitzad salakot agalut tzrichim em liot chazakim yoter ma'adora kodem. So even though because there's all these scars from the galut, we need people to be stronger than the previous generation. Ki kvar paala habriut anafshit shel ha'aretz lechasenet nafsham. Because it seems that the general state of healing that the land has gone through has provided enough immunity for the previous generation. <laughs> the dwindling down of the soul aspect and the mehasis, what's the right word for that? Hesitation. Hesitation. <coughs> the, the, the opposite of conviction and, and clarity. The hesitation, the back and forth, this, and, the, and we're seeing it in this word too. The hesitation, mitzad the grandchildren and children of those that acted with Messiah Snafesh, Baratz Yisrael, how could it be? I think by all of us there was a sense of waking up on October 8th, where when you had a minute to remove yourself from the, the gory and the agony, there was a sense of, okay, I guess this is what it, takes in order to end everything, right? So well, here we are a few months later, and we see that's not the, that, that actually has not been unfolding. But he's, he explains why. It's because if the land and the people aren't driven with the illumination of the neshama, hesitation and second-guessing and being politically correct will be that which leads us into balagan after balagan after balagan. Tam adavar, the reason for living in a state of hesitation here, hu machmat chisaron or hakodesh, is due to a lacking of the light of holiness. Machmat chisaron advekut ba'ashem. It stems from this lacking of what we're, what we're going to define. We haven't defined this yet. Living in a state of Dvekut ba Hashem, clinging to Hashem. Hamavhirim et achazon bet atachlit shel chayenu, which make the vision and the purpose of our lives bright and clear to us. Benotnim lanu oz v'taatzumot, and it also provides us and equips us with tremendous strength. In order to do what? Lememesh ulehakshim et kol chalomot hakodesh haatzurim bekirbenu bekerev hauma kula. He's saying within us and within the whole nation, there's a treasure of holy dreams, holy aspirations, but they're still covered up. If I don't receive the strength from above that I need and the vision and clarity as to why I'm working so hard and I'm trying to make things work here, all those dreams will go to my grave with me, chas v'shalom. All these holy dreams will never see the light of day. Now, what's considered a holy dream that you think the Klal has? This is very good. What's a holy dream that Am Yisrael has that I think is still very much covered covered up? Huh? Taking 
Right, Beit HaMikdash. That, that's, what does that mean? Living in a state of Beit HaMikdash. What does that mean, living with the Beit HaMikdash? No concealment. It means that I have a dream that every human being in the world will know that they're loved by Hashem. Who has the luxury to speak about such concepts in the state that we're in, right? So, Rav Sasson, huh? The kids. Nachon, nachon. The kids do talk about it. Nachon. That's why Rav Shlomo said, you know, the, Hashem only talks to you if you're a kid. Daber el bnei Yisrael. It's always, <laughs> never Daber el horei Yisrael, or mevugare ziknei, you know. It's always Daber el bnei Yisrael. As long as you consider yourself a child, with that tmimut of, of, of letting those holy dreams lifroach, blossom up, you'll hear, and you'll get the strength to do it. You'll get the strength to do it. Now, this is, like he says over here, this is just one example to why things are so unbalanced here. But it's, the, it's a very strong example, like he says here. Zoi dugma achat minei rabot lachesronot b'meshorei ha-nefesh ve-aruach ha-baim ketotsaot ketotsaa mi-chesron or ha-kodesh chesron ha-neshama. En malasot, we're meant to be soul beings here. The whole thing. Now, one thing you gotta wipe, we have to wipe out of our system is that when we say we're supposed to be soul beings here, that it's dati versus chiloni. Not, why? Not, I'm not trying to sound um, achduti, or whatever you call it, right? <laughs> At all. I'm trying to actually really touch upon something very clear. There are people, you know, I meet them more in the world of music, in the line of music. I meet these neshamas. And they have tried to go to shuls. They've tried to go to learnings. And for them, because even the spiritual content is not soulful. It's just content. Right? So therefore, when we speak about, when we keep on saying, what we have to lead now is a spiritual revolution, it's so easy to say, let's get everyone to keep Shabbos and let's just make sure that everyone's putting on tefillin and all those, and forget about the chayalim, I'm talking about the am right now. Everyone's lighting candles, v'chulei. It's that the people that are, so to speak, representing God have to become mamish, soulful entities. They have to be people that their souls are illuminating. And even if they're filled with brain and info, they have to be willing to put that on the side in light of what's needed to be as a people in this, in this country. Which is what? Komat HaNeshama. Every single, spirit, every single leader that represents anything in Judaism in, in, in our world of Torah, has to be Rebbe's. Everyone. Everyone has to be a soulful, conscious, aware teacher. So it's not just, we're not just saying, when we say, Ha-neshama od lo me'ira. You think, with the amount of shuls and yeshivas we have, we would say, no, it's so much brighter than it ever was before, because we have so much, but it's not that. And that's a hard thing for us to accept. That's something you've, you've heard from me for years already, and I'm, I'm never, ever, Bezrat Hashem, going to stop harping on this, because I feel like it's, it's just our life's mission to, to make that, to understand that. Sorry? Yeah, just loud so everyone in the back can hear. This concept is very... I'm sorry, louder. Yeah, yeah, it's not... This concept... Yeah. Um, it's very familiar. I think it was either like a Sikha or a Maimur of the Rebbe where he talked about <clears throat> during Pesach of let my people go. Like this was like a slogan mm-hmm. that like we're all very familiar with. But right. what was less familiar was so that they may serve me. Vayavduni. Shlach et ami vayavduni. Correct. And so the Rebbe spoke about the importance of making sure that this vayavduni is used because, okay, once we're free, this is like exactly what we're right. sharing is, okay, once we're free, then what? I mean, what are we doing with that? And this idea of the Abduni is like making sure that the focus is is about Hashem, that it's it's not just like freedom to do anything or whatever, it's about connecting. Like once we have that freedom, like what are we doing with it next? For sure. <clears throat> For sure. He's saying, huh? It's coming soon, even in the Parsha, but... Right, right, it's coming up soon. <laughs> it's coming up soon. 
chesron haneshama. He's saying this the neshama is lacking. The neshama is lacking. I, I think I shared with you one year that I once, whenever I see these words, I think of a singer named Eti Ankari. Have you heard of her? She's a she's a gevalt. She I grew up on her. She was very very big in the Israeli, uh, not you know sec, whatever you call it, secular. I don't. It's not. I feel weird saying that because she, she had more soul as a secular artist than. You no, know, all the trumpets and of of of, of, of whatever. Sorry. <laughs> she's she's done amazing tshuva, like serious deep tshuva, at the Ankari. She lives in a town right next to my in-laws in Lapid, and um, now she just you know sings in front of women and she's v'mashi shakedusha. But before she decided to just sing in front of women, I performed on the same s- s- gathering with her in. Marat Beit Kuvrin. You know where that is? Gorgeous, gorgeous area. It was it was a festival at Tanakh. And there was a bunch of artists there. And her husband, he looks mamish, whatever you think Maishu Rabbeinu look like. Her husband looks like Maishu Rabbeinu. His name is Doron. So I was schmoozing with her husband and, and her and talking about Ma Am Rotze. Like, because she knows the Am. She's been a public figure here for years. And, uh, she kept on saying, "Ha'am rotze chibur, ha'am pashut rotze chibur, chibur lema, lema am litchaber lema." What is the chibur lehitchaber? Right? The the that the people just want connection. That's really what they want. That's all they really want. To what? To their own souls. To their own holy dreams that they don't even realize they're dreaming inside of them. What is a Rebbe supposed to do? He's supposed to attach you to your holy dreams that you have inside of you that you didn't even know are there and give you access to it and activating buttons. That's what the Am wants to lead Chaber to. That's what the Am really wants. Chisron and Neshama is that we don't have people that are directing others to their own dreams, to their own Inyan. And the Am feels it now. This They don't realize it, but there's such suffocation. Listen, the whole thing about judicial reform. Do you know how many big neshamas are, were very active in that? You think it was all just a political thing? It's that, look at us. We have people, we're, we're made of so much, we have so many different feelings and emotions. But because as Jewish people, we, by us, it's, it's got to be activated separately and differently. But if no one's going to tell me how to activate these things right, in the right way, I'm going to use it in different ways. I'm going to use passion. I'm going to use activism. What's that? That's what I've been doing. Like, the Leg- with passion. Legamre, legamre. Legamre. 100%. Now, on, I forget which year this was. On Thursday's year with Rev Kluger, we learned, when no one teaches you that the activation of what you're busy doing in this world is supposed to be enjoyable, that's what you did on Thursday? You're going to go and find it somewhere else. You have a whole generation that no one really spoke to them about the neshama in an enjoyable way. Speaking about the soul meant a lot of sacrifice and you know, giving up things and hard work and amelut. So many of them said, Shabbat bishvili is a yam, mishpacha, mata mata man, yachshav li lakum mugdam baboker, shaot ani mitpale, ez a manucha. And you know what? He's right. Shabbos could be the least restful day of the week, unless Shabbos is Shabbos, right? Chisron and Neshama. You could have a Shabbos without any soul. You could have a Shabbos without any soul. So a whole generation of people here were screaming, Reb Shlomo used to say, they're screaming for Shabbos, but not the Shabbos you're offering them. They're screaming for a Baal Shem Tov Shabbos. The only thing is, you have to be, you have to, you have to be that. You have to be vulnerable enough to realize that you need something more than the previous generations did. Mamash. So let's continue for just a few more lines. Again, Zoi Dugma, when the third paragraph, Zoi Dugma Chat Minei Rabot Lachesronot Bemeshorei Anefesh Veruach Habaim Ketotza'a Mi Chisaron Or HaKodesh Chesron HaNeshama Chesronot Eile Yealtsu Et Ha'am Leitkadem El Ever Shlemuto El he'arat nishmato, el tochen ha-kodesh el-chayav, the lackings that we're feeling, 
are going to force the people to march towards finding a satiation, eventually realizing that it'll have to be engaging with my soul. Eventually we're going to realize this, that all the things we think we're looking for, even words like, you know, words that have been so perverted, like the word shalom. <laughs> what a horrible word. I mean, it, it, it's such a horrible, that word peace, uh, shalom, has been taken mamish into captivity for 75 years. It's a bad, bad, we shouldn't say that word for like another another few years, right? It's one of God's names, first of all, and it's, it's you know, you understand what I'm saying? Shalom. People are looking for shalom. What does that mean even? Shalom. We have, it's, it's great. I mean, I know that the first thing I always think of is like when I have a few days off is, let me grab Bina and the girls and the Nachman and let's go to Amman for a week because we have a peace treaty with them. We have a shalom. Let's go to Jordan for, and it's said in the name shalom. These are not things we've, this is not, these are not answers to our dreams. You understand? These are not answers. What we have now, it's not answers to the bigger dreams of Kodesh inside. But eventually, Rav Sasson, this is Manish from Rav Kuk, is saying, eventually, we're going to realize all the things we thought, what we're looking for, we're going to still be hungry. And it's going to force us, eventually, to realize, Efo ani v'aneshama shali? Where am I in my soul? Ube'emet, shorish hasarat ha'chesronot alalu, hu be'hasarat ruach atuma. The root of removing these blemishes, these lackings, begins with removing the spirit of Tuma. This is now going to sound very Me'asharim right now. I'm just letting you know. What, is it, what does Tuma mean? What does, what does impurity mean? You can't go to the Mikdash. That's what you can't do, but what is it? Huh? Distance. Distance. What, what, how does it manifest? What is, how does Tuma manifest? In this world, right now, for us right now, Ruach of Tuma. What is the Ruach of Tuma in the world right now? Lack of... Can, huh? Netflix. Ego. <laughs> Ego for sure. Distorted what? Distorted reality. What does that mean? I just want to go right with that. What does that mean? Accepting this to be ideal? Is that what you're saying? something as true and it's or we we succumb to like distance or reality that weighs the opposite of what truth is like that's the whole mm. thing of like political correctness right 100 tell me something what about being distant from people that you live with is that tuma is that ruach of tuma mm-hmm. anything that's not love it's, anything that's not love anything that's not holy love, holy love. right right so he brings an example here. He says like this, Dugmat hayamim shel shiva nekim, sheomlam bafoal hadam yifsik, ach ruach atuma od lo sara ad atvila bamikve, ki ina yechola lasur legamre, el al yedei ha'arat ha'neshama v'shlemut ha'koma. And just like we have, I'm not going into this obviously, but just like there's a period where it's mamish tuma, then that stops, but then there's ruach of tuma, which basically means there's still an element of that which made separation. And until the Am can go into the Mikvah, he's always bringing this back, which in this context is the end of Svirata Omer, and the Mikvah is Shvuiz, Matan Torah, the soul can't really, the soul can't really be itself. We, we still can't really be ourselves in, until we're all in the Mikvah, until we all have removed the Ruach of Tuma from within our midst. It's still not possible. Ruach, now he says, <laughs> listen to this paragraph. Ruach HaTuma b'muvan leumi hi hashpa'at Ruach HaGoyim Aleinu. The spirit of Tuma and a national regard is the influence of the spirit of the, the other nations upon us. That's what you said on Hanukkah. 100%. שהיא קור טוב של בחינת גלות הנפש והרוח שיעבוד ופחד מהגויים חיקוים, that means 
imitation. That means building here anything that's like a me'ain. Oh, they have that there. Utsvichat tarbuta mazaralanu. And needing their foreign culture for our culture, the culture of the people. Now, one of the people that on the one hand built this country and destroyed this country spoke about this place being the Singapore of the Middle East. Those words, Yizachu ledira'on olam, those words are probably one of the most damaging descriptions that you could have for Eretz Yisrael. And that's why the end of that person's life and his memory is a chilul Hashem in I'm not even going to say his name here. And this is one of the builders of this land, of this country. Because when you, when you, when you draw up a dream that's the opposite of what the Neshama is dreaming about, it's dangerous. And the people that are leading the national voice of this country for so long were basically drawing up like r- recordings of a dream that has nothing to do with what the Jewish Neshama is dreaming. Nothing. Bringing in such a foreign culture, it's not even about it being evil culture. It's not dafka about it being evil. It's just that when you're not what you're supposed to be, and when you're trying to be somebody else, even if it's something beautiful, it's something that Hashem despises. You know, Shema Yisrael Hashem Lekeinu Hashem Echad. What does Hashem Echad really mean? God is one. Shlomo used to say it means that God can't stand imitation. God is one. He expects you to be one. He can't stand Stein, especially when it comes to what we're supposed to be here in this, you know, in 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 this land, in this country, as a people. So he says over here, Anna. Shlomo Melech tried that. Also. Huh? Shlomo and look what happened. And that was reversed. Maybe that explains. But maybe that explains your initial question from months ago. No, but Mama, think about it. Maybe that actually explains your question. As glorious and as glamorous and as serene as, as the first, the uh, Jews living here, the first Beit HaMikdash was, we were always trying to wonder, like, so what happened? How do we... Maybe it is because there was an element of what he's saying over here, taking from there and trying to bring it into here. Yecholiot. I don't understand what was, what was Beit HaMikdash, what was wrong with You want to explain? But it didn't. No, it didn't. Well, the fact is, is that it didn't last. At the end of the day, it didn't last. No, no, I'm not saying for sure. We're just offering it as maybe one of the ideas behind why it didn't end up lasting. Because it seemed that the state of the Shechina and everything else was everything else was just like the highest in the world, and yet it didn't last. So here he's saying, Ruach of Tuma, the spirit of Tuma, is when I'm trying either, not just to be politically correct, but that I actually believe that what's needed here, they can give me. They can give me. I have to take from there. It works there. Let me bring that into here. Isn't it, it never works. that we see the opposite? Like, I, I just, the sentence I learned today was, the more they hate us, the, the more Jewish you the more we become Jewish, the Jewish we are. So this is really forcing us now. This halicha is going That's to what you're saying. Yeah, al tzu, yachah. The Jewish roots of who we are, all, over the, all the Jews all over the world. Right, but the thing is, is that it doesn't end with just saying I'm a Jew. That's the beginning. Mm-hmm. It, it, where do yeah, you Jesus go from right. there? Right. Like imagine right now, if there was like an aliyah of 50,000 Jews from, from America, that are saying, we want to come here to discover what our, what our holy dreams are and implement them. How many places would you have to send them to? How many leaders do you have to say, okay, you take this, however, you take that, however, you take that? It's, it's so broken of us to be Jewish vis-a-vis the hate of our it's the word. It's, it's, it's inevitable, meaning that's what happens, but that's not ideal. And that's not the way... That is not a lechatchila at all. It's the most bedievet sheba bedievet. You would think that's what, right, right, right. That's why I think like a baal tshuva has an advantage. Don't rub it in. I, 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 I trust me. I know. 
<laughs> Don't rub it in. <laughs> Not a little. <laughs> Not a little. But we also have other advantages, though. You should know. <laughs> Let's finish this paragraph. We just want to bring in America to Israel it's not the thing you know we can give a lot of examples of like what that ruach of Tuma is like we could give a lot of them right and for many of us be like oh no but that actually but I love that you know mm-hmm. okay you love that but I, I, it's not Israel I don't know what Israel using it for like Avodat Hashem versus using it for not for Avodat Hashem like if you're Nachon Nachon like if you brought in good paper plates because you want to make a nice shot table, that's not too much. But I know, but I don't think that's what Ilana was 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 saying about Shlomo Amelech. It was more, it's much, it was much more complex than in Heinz ketchup and and whatever whatever that that item is that made it feel more, you know, yeah. What do you want to say? It sort of connects a little bit to how you started off this year about talking about that man who did not budge for a second when he heard a siren. Right. That's, that siren and those plumes and the, the, and the Iron Dome, all that could be the Ruach Tuma. And he didn't budge for uh, It's so funny you're saying that because on the one hand, people hear that and they say, what do you mean? That's all <laughs> Gal Galei Hatzalah. It's such a Hatzalah. It's such a savior. But those are things that actually enabled more and more of a Ruach Zara to come here, the way we conduct ourselves. That which, so to speak, protected us ended up being the greatest contributor to the Khurban that we have. It's, also it's then, so a fuch, it's so crazy. But then we believe, right, that that's where our protection is coming from, and we forget that it's really only from Hashem. All these things, like, look what he says here. Kol sigim. we're in the third third line here, second second to bottom paragraph. Kol sigim alalu, hem she'eriyot me'atumah ha'retzutza she'achza banu bagalut. It's still leftovers. It's like, you know, I'm from L.A. You know, we had aftershocks all the time, right? Like there's earthquakes. That's what it was called, aftershocks, yeah, yeah. right? It's still aftershocks of galut. Like the way we conduct ourselves and finding refuge in an iron dome, it's still an aftershock of galut. It has nothing to do with the, with the ideal state of a Jew living in home. Nothing. We, 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 we glorified it. And it, has, and, it, and it actually is, it has nothing to do with the way that we're, why we're here. Vem kayamim gam betkufat hashiva nekiim velo yasuru ela bechibur ela kodesh u bechinat atfil ba mikveh. But he's saying, but that's still shayach to the time that there's separation, right? After, again, after the seven days, it's still kashur to the, to the seven clean days, and it's still kashur to a state before there's an immersion in the mikveh. Immersion in the mikveh means Hashem. I am fully in, <coughs> like fully in. I know that Einod Milvado is a real, I don't know anything else other than if I don't have you and I don't feel like we have each other, I have nothing. And it doesn't mean that then, then you don't have an army and you don't have all the other, prote- that's not what it means either. It just means you know why you have an army and you know in what name the army does what it does. But it's, it's, it's deeper than that. It's, it's consciousness. It's living in a state of consciousness where it's clear to me how, why I'm conducting myself the way I'm conducting myself, why I'm investing here, why I am doing everything over here the way that I'm doing it. Rak zrikat maim chayim. Only pouring maim chayim, water of life, the depth, the pneumious of the Torah. Bifchinat ha'arat neshama, the Torah that I learn that illuminates my soul, he Only these things will heal us completely from that which the galut you know, makes me feel like I don't have and all of its pains. And it will remove all the little, like they say, like, you know, whenever the rocket falls, it's like, oh, look, shavrir, shrapnel here, shrapnel. We're all walking around with a bunch of shrapnel still from the galut. It's only going to be a total mind, body, soul, spiritual revelation and, and having the guts to ask what that really means and discovering it's much more than just sitting and learning all day long. Almost <laughs> last time Am Yisrael was mechubad, kavodik. Kavod will come back. Glory, honor will come back to the people. 
Osher Kalkali. Osher Kalkali. Osher Kalkali is a joke. We think we have it. It's just because certain parts of the of the of, of society has it, but as a whole, there's still plenty of Jews that are barely making it through the month. Barely. Osher Kalkali means economical fortune. It'll have to be like a real Hanukkah that lasts, not a Hanukkah that doesn't last, but a Hanukkah that lasts, where Greece, you pashut, you don't have anything on me. You have nothing on me. It's not the paper plates, it's the goikai. Yeah, the, the, it's, 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 it's not the product, it's, exactly. Veshivara anana, and a freshening return, el ma'ayanot ha'chaim, to the wellsprings of life, tarbut ha'kodesh, holy culture, ha'chakuka, which is engraved, bizgulat am Yisrael, it's engraved in who am Yisrael really is, holy culture, tarbut ha'kodesh, holy culture. Holiness doesn't mean there's no culture. A lot of people think, oh, if I'm too holy, if I get too holy, you can't do anything fun. You can't do anything anymore. Right? It's, 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 that's a galut mindset of, of Tarbuta Kodesh. Nah, Tarbuta Kodesh means my engagement in activities on all levels is, is mamash filled with, with Kedusha, with holiness, with, with love. It's always aligned with the dreams of holiness that I have inside of me not being ignored. Not being ignored. You know, they, there's a lot of questions they're going to ask us when we get to Shemayim. The Gemara tells us a few of them. But I, I know one of them is petrifying. One of them is like, you know, how much did you, how much did you, did you ignore the holy dreams that, that I placed inside of you? So, we're, Baruch Hashem, alive to be able to, to, to give it a shot, like to give it a real, real shot, to keep on plunge forward. And to keep on with all the other things that we're speaking about, about what brings us to a life of Dveikus, this is what we're here for. And we should merit the, the wisdom and the clarity and the direction, how to really get in touch with all these things that do exist inside of us. Chalamot Shel Kodesh, and I agree with you, Malka, it should never be because I'm shoved and therefore I'm a Jew. Daniel Pearl, Shem Yikom Damo, should know that... The world says, wow, look at him. He even, he, I want to say that with a smile, you know, with pride. Not with a gun to your head. Not with a knife to my neck or a gun to my head. Not with an iron dome, not with any of these things. Again, Hashem can wipe out all this evil, physical evil from the world, but the Bechira we're given is still, what are you filling a, um, you know, a, a Hamasless Eretz Yisrael? What are you going to fill it with? What are you going to fill it with? So we should know what to fill it with and we should do it with pride and joy.